In this video today, I'm gonna to talk about alcohol-free living. I'm gonna share some background on my personal story. As some of you know, I don't drink anymore. And I'm gonna share some of the benefits that come from not drinking, as well as some of the challenges I faced and the tips that have really helped me along the way. Hi there, my name is Chelsea, and if you are new to my channel, I'm here to share all things self-love and self-care. I'm coming up on two years alcohol-free in about a month, which is crazy to say because I used to be such a drinker. Loved happy hours, loved wine nights, I was a social drinker, wine on the couch when I watched my shows, like I enjoyed drinking and it just became a built-in part of my lifestyle. Alcohol really became this coping mechanism and this crutch to deal with my anxiety, whether that was social anxiety or just day to day. Deep down, I didn't like how much I drank. I didn't love the decisions I would make when I would drink. And not to mention, I did not enjoy the headaches or the frequent hangovers or the anxiety. In a nutshell, it just kind of felt like my potential was wasting away and who I was didn't feel in line with who I felt like I was deep down. So those choices were not serving me. Long story short, when my dad passed away a little over two years ago, I used that pain and that grief as an excuse to drink more, which was not something I needed at that time. I had been secretly curious about what quitting would be like and if I should do it. For the longest time, I just ignored that little voice inside of me. Well, that little voice one day just became a lot louder and I realized that I didn't wanna live this way anymore. Which now brings me to the benefits of quitting. I touched on this a little bit before, but I just feel a lot more like myself when I don't drink and the decisions I make are a lot more in line with the type of life I wanna live. I have more time and energy to dedicate to the things that I'm passionate about and the things that I care about. I save a lot of money, and something that's been really important is I've developed new coping skills for how to deal with difficult emotions and anxious feelings, and that helped a lot because now I don't have all these things just festering underneath the surface. I'm able to process feelings as they come and let them go. I've learned to be more confident in who I am in social situations and just be okay with the fact that I can be a little shy and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't need to force myself to be more outgoing. Not to mention, this whole process helped me get in touch with new self-care practices and that's really what sparked this whole entire YouTube channel and brand that I've created and I'm so grateful for that. Now let's talk about some of the challenges I faced and the advice I would give someone if they recently quit or if they're curious about quitting or if they're supporting a loved one or friend who may have recently quit. Most of these struggles I really experienced in the first year of quitting. So the good news is if you have recently quit or if you're about to and you feel like a fish out of water, just know that it won't always feel that way. It will get a little bit easier and it will begin to feel more natural as time goes on. Now let's talk about these challenges. To start off with, I always made sure to have my fridge stocked with beverage options. So for me that was kombucha, soda water, maybe like an iced sparkling tea, just anything that I could sip on to replace those old habits. Being prepared is really helpful. Additionally, if you are attending an event or a party, COVID permitting, I would recommend bringing your own beverages that are non-alcoholic so that you have options. It's not uncommon for a host to forget that not everyone drinks alcohol at a social gathering. I'm guilty of it too. Back when I used to drink, I would sometimes forget that not everyone's going to be drinking. So being prepared is always helpful. The next challenge I faced was checking off 
the firsts. What I mean by that is the first sober birthday, sober anniversary, sober wedding, sober sporting event, sober Thanksgiving, sober Christmas, I mean, you name it. If there were any events that you were used to drinking at, it can feel a little weird to not be drinking alcohol to celebrate the occasion. The good news is it will get drastically easier after you check it off the first time. So it can feel a little awkward and jarring the first time, but once you've done it, it gets drastically easier. So in that first year, I made sure to remember that the firsts are uncomfortable and to give myself a pat on the back afterwards if it felt a little weird or difficult. And that brings me to the next challenge, and that is fear of what other people will think. Fearful of whether people will stop inviting you places because they feel weird drinking around you if you're sober. Fearful that you won't be accepted and embraced the same way. What I've learned is I have social anxiety, so that is part of the reason I drink. So then when you remove alcohol and you're already dealing with that pre-existing social anxiety and now you have this new anxiety that people won't accept this new decision you're making, it can be a lot at once and you don't really want to feel like the odd one out. However, I was pleasantly surprised that people weren't too weird about it. Um, a few people were a little awkward because they had questions. It's a little weird to go from drinking all the time to cold turkey. But once people realized that I wasn't there to judge them and I was there to have a good time as well, um, people just kind of let their guard down and accepted it. My husband and I would still go out to dive bars before COVID <laughs> and we would spend time with friends and we'd stay out late. And I think that once our friends started to see that we're still the same people, we're just not drinking, it helped them to understand our decision a little bit more. Another bit of advice I have is you don't have to make it a big deal. So for example, if you're going to an event and you haven't told many people about this new decision and it just feels a little daunting, you don't have to over explain yourself. First of all, if you're at a bar or a social situation, you just holding a drink, most of the time people will assume it's alcohol. And if they don't and they ask you, you can say, I'm not drinking tonight. That's the truth. And when you're ready, you can tell them more, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. So the point is, don't overcomplicate it and think that when you walk into a room, everyone's gonna be like, what's going on? Why aren't you drinking? For the most part, people are having fun and they are not paying attention to whether you're drinking anyways. And if people are not supportive and they are hounding you and they won't accept this decision and they're giving you a hard time, you learn a lot about this person. Either one, drinking's a big part of their life and they just cannot even fathom and they'll come around to it in a bit. Or two, you were just a drinking buddy to them and now that you aren't able to consume alcohol with them, your role in their life doesn't really exist anymore. And that's unfortunate and it's hurtful, but if that happens, you just need to remember that your worth is so much more than consuming alcohol with someone. Another challenge that I faced was learning to deal with emotions and uncomfortable feelings and anxiety without this crutch. On one hand, you are feeling everything and you don't have that escapism anymore. On the other hand, you might have been avoiding a lot of emotions throughout the entirety of your drinking. So it's really important to be gentle on yourself as you learn these coping mechanisms. You feel maybe old stuff that's coming up that you never dealt with. It's really important, like I said, to just be gentle on yourself, journal, call a friend, lean on someone for support, and just know that this feeling will pass and you will develop new coping skills and feel more comfortable with this whole process. And it's important to remind yourself that this is a normal feeling and your self-care will be even more crucial at this point. And the last challenge is you might feel kind of weird. You can flip on the TV and at any given moment, it seems like there's an alcohol ad, social media, people are always drinking. It can feel like it's this really culturally normal thing and that's because it is. Now that being said, it doesn't mean you're some weirdo, it just means you're going against the grain a little bit here. 
So what I did to help myself feel less isolated was seek out online community. So I didn't interact with a ton of people. I more or less just wanted to know that there were people like me who had a similar reason for quitting. Someone who simply quit because they didn't really like their relationship with alcohol and they wanted to make a change and establish a new lifestyle. I did this by looking through hashtags. For example, the hashtag sober curious or the hashtag sober curious movement has some cool information and you can find people through that. It just helps you feel a little less alone to see that you're not the only one making this decision and you're not some weirdo. I will go ahead and I will leave in the description below some of the accounts that post a lot about the Sober Curious movement and advice and facts and tips and have different ways for you to get in contact with other people and see who in your area might also be living alcohol free. It's helpful to just know that you're not alone in this decision and that this is actually something that's becoming increasingly more popular even if it doesn't feel that way sometimes. I hope this video today was helpful for you to see what it's like to live alcohol free in a culture that heavily promotes drinking. I'm not here to judge anyone or to say that you should quit, only you know whether that's something you'd even be interested in. But I am here to just share my story and what I learned on the off chance that you also have that little voice inside of you that has been curious about quitting and what it would be like. And if you do have that little nudge inside of you that is curious about what it would be like to quit, maybe this is just a seed. Maybe this is just planting a seed. Maybe you just entertain the idea of quitting one day. And sometimes that's all you need right now. At the end of the day, this is your decision to make, but chances are if you made it this far into the video, you're either curious about it or you have quit or you perhaps know someone who has quit and you want to support them. So you can use this information however you would like to. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. I make new YouTube videos every Friday and I would love if you would join me on this journey. I also share a lot of content on the Real Glow Up Instagram page if you'd like to follow me there as well.